Uh, well, here we are again. Uh, we're starting in a slightly different place this time. This is the, the area where um, Dean, uh, aka Trimworks, who is our sort of uphol the upholsterer we use, and he has a, his own work area within our workshop. This is where he works his magic. Um, we don't normally come up here because there's a good chance that Jamie behind the camera will come a cropper on the stairs that lead to this area. Uh, we figured if, we, if he's only going down the stairs, at least that reduces the odds by half of him falling on the way. Um, I thought I'd show you what we're working on here. This is the uh, door cards for the Cortina. Now, the Cortina this week is a way of having the exhaust built at Simpson. Uh, it's actually due back later today. Um, but we just, I just thought I'd show you some of the interior going together. So these are the door cards. And this is actually an original Cortina door card here. And we wanted to get, take a little bit of influence from that original design uh, with this kind of vertical pleating on there. And also this, this kind of swishing line here, which is carried on in the door pressing. On the, there's a, a section of the door here which is exposed painted metal and it's kind of got that same line on it. We thought we'd keep two of these lines, um, these two here, and then create a smaller insert of the actual vertical pleating. Now, we've made the cards completely uh, from scratch in this ABS material, which is a bit less prone to moisture absorption. Um, and then we've laid on foam, uh, like a high density foam, to create uh, a difference in the heights, which then creates those lines in the, in the panel. And then for the actual insert, because you can't, when, when you do this, these vertical stitches, you can't just end them in the middle of nowhere. They have to sort of have a junction. Uh, and if you tried to do a junction with another stitched section all the way around here, the chances of getting wrinkles in the corners or it just not looking pleasing is uh, very high. Uh, so what we do is we create another separate panel. This is actually made in steel and then we've spot welded on studs on the back of it. So the ribbed section is then wrapped all the way around that and then actually bolted through the main panel. Uh, we'll trim those studs down shortly. Um, and then we've used like a five mil thick foam here. So it actually has quite a significant recess that that sits into to make it much, not flush, but a lot more flush. So you don't see just the edges of this panel. So it all looks, uh, all looks pretty smart. So really happy with what Dean's done on that. And the car's coming back late today. So excited to see them going in. Um, let's see if we can fall down some stairs. Say hello to Dean. Hi, Dean. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, the door. <laughs> right. Ah, and you thought you thought I didn't have a cup for my hand. It's here. <laughs> Don't worry about that music, Jamie. He's frantically, he's behind the camera there, frantically trying to turn the music down. But look at my mic's over here. What's well, never going to pick that up? Uh, right, so what we've got here, the 2JZ head for the Mark II Jag project, Project Utah. We showed previously that there was a bit of damage on that. Uh, and after sort of looking at the options of maybe trying to source another head, we eventually decided uh, we'd go with repairing it. So it's been off to have the damage laser welded, uh, which is how you see it here. And then the next step now is that that, that will be that circular recess in the combustion chamber will be machined down to match the original one and then the whole face of that will be skimmed just just slightly to get it a perfect mating face for the head gasket so hopefully that'll all go fine certainly the welding looks lovely um, i've also got a couple of parts arrived these are the cam covers for the same uh, they're actually from a, a company in australia called golby customs i think it is um, and uh, we thought about making our own, but to be honest, for the price of these, even by the time they're shipped over here, uh, and they were exactly the look we wanted anyway, it just made sense to buy these. Um, so what we're going to do is, is basically sand out all of the machining marks on here and just polish them up to a polished finish um, so that they resemble the original XK6 um, cam covers. And I, think, I think they're going to be really, really nice when they're on. Um, another thing which just turned up, these are just the bezels we've had machined for the gear stick gator and the handbrake gator on the Cortina. Um, just fairly, fairly simple machine parts. They'll be anodized now, um, and then they'll, they'll have the leather gaiters within them. And we've also got the starter motor and the alternator sitting over here for the 2JZ, which we've had completely refurbished um, and you know completely stripped. So the casings have been bead blasted, all the parts have been refinished and plated. So they're basically uh, effectively new, new parts now. Um, what Adam, who's not here now, I think he was here when we came down, uh, Adam was just working on the axle. Um, we're about to start the axle rebuild for the Jag as well. We've had the casing totally stripped, um, zinc metal sprayed and powder coated black. Um, we're going to start rebuilding that now, obviously with new bearings and seals, etc. 
and the front axle we've actually finished already. Uh, so that's lurking in the corner of the workshop, but that's had the similar treatment. So all the steel parts, blasted, zinc metal sprayed, powder coated, um, all of the parts that are going to be a plated, exposed plated finish have been uh, zinc nickel plated for corrosion protection. Um, obviously new bushes throughout, uh, new ball joints, all of that sort of thing. Uh, we've also had a, the, the steering rack on that refurbished. Uh, and then that was the point actually where we were able to try our 3D printed rack mounts. So in a previous episode, we looked at the rack mounts that we designed for it. Um, and we were 3D printing a trial version, which we've now tried. Uh, we've made a couple of little revisions, so that proves the worth of, uh, of doing the 3D print as a trial. Um, and now we're happy with that. We're going to get those drawings sent off to have those machined in aluminium. Um, and that will be the, the front end complete then. Um, we have a little look over here. We've got the Mercedes in the air now. Um, finally, the, the ramp's been held up with various other projects for a while. Um, but we've got that in the air so we can do the plumbing. So we're just running the fuel lines, brake lines under there. Uh, we've got the battery cable run under there now um, and, and various other things that we're going to start fitting like the height sensors for the air ride system and various other bits of wiring that need to go into that. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, a lot of people keep asking about it in the videos. Um, so I thought I'd actually talk about it in this one. It's pretty much at the very end of its, uh, its build now. I've been test driving it over the last few days. Uh, so it's a Hillman Imp which for uh, non-UK viewers is probably <laughs> not, not a term you've heard very often. Uh, the observant ones will notice it's got a, a Singer chamois front end on it with the twin lights. Um, now the brief with this project is essentially to create a, a sort of modern take on some Hillman imps that were doing the rounds in the UK back when these were fairly new, prepared by a company called Greetham Engineering. Now, kind of back then, they were the guys to go to when it came to Hillman imp tuning. Uh, and there were certain things that set the cars that they worked on apart, generally. They often had these, these vents in the front. They had an oil cooler that hung out of the back on the bumper, which, from, from a performance point of view, is uh, not, not exactly an ideal place for it. But it was just a thing that they did on them. Um, and the owner of this car basically wanted to kind of put, a, uh, as I say, a modern slant on that, on that look. So it's, it's kind of a nod to those original imps. Uh, it's a track car build, essentially. Um, and we've been through and just re-engineered a huge amount of it. So the rear, the rear suspension arms are completely our own design. Um, they're adjustable in camber, uh, adjustable toe. They also use um, CV joint drive shafts. So originally, these are Rotoflex drive shafts, which are basically like a rubber donut. When the, pro the drive shafts just literally have a three-legged tripod on the end of them. Um, so the rubber donut takes all the suspension movement. Um, and it's just not a very pleasing design to have sort of rubber parts like that in a drive shaft constantly flexing as the suspension moves. Um, so we designed our arms to have uh, modern CV joint type hubs in them. We've done adapters onto the gearbox to have CV joints. Um, front end is more standard, although we've built some adjustability into it. It's got Willwood four-pot calipers all round on it and vented discs all round. Um, the cooling, the radiator's normally in the back, and these are notorious for overheating issues. Uh, on this one, we've got the radiator in the front, um, so the pipes run the full length of the car in, a, in a, essentially a, a conduit, if you like, that we built into the shell when we were at the metalwork stage. Uh, it's got an electric water pump, pumps that system. Um, and when we did the, the sort of metalwork on the interior, we've built into the rear seat area uh, basically a covering panel that houses um, various systems that we wanted to hide away. So the electric water pump, the fuel pump, the fuel filter, the engine ECU, um, they all hide uh, under that panel in the back there. The engine was built by, um, oh God, who was the engine built by? Rodwell Motorsport. Um, and that's a long stroke version of the original. Uh, so it's 1200 cc. Uh, it made just shy of 120 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a huge amount. But bearing in mind these engine, the whole engine and transmission weighs around 80 kilos um, and the whole car only weighs about sort of high 600s, low 700s. Um, it's actually a, a fair amount of power and certainly plenty to have a lot of fun in one of these. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite good fun on the odd good weather day we've had recently, just flying up and down the lanes and trying to iron out little niggles. And that's usually what the process is when we get to this stage, it's taking it out. Initially, you tend to even not get as far as the driveway before you notice a couple of things you want changing. Uh, and then you get further and further and start getting more and more miles under it. 
Um, and that, that's the process we're going through now. So I'm just taking it out, coming back, making notes, making some changes, going out again, and uh, repeating that process until we're happy with it. And then it will be over to the owner. And doubtlessly, he'll also do the same, take it out, and there'll probably be odd bits and bobs he wants tweaking on it. Um, and yeah, eventually we get something that everybody's 100% happy with. Uh, so that's that. <clears throat> Let's go through to the metal workshop. I'm going to grab my tea. People keep saying, what, do, you, do you never not have this cup of tea in your hand? Well, actually, the reason, the reason Nat and I often have a cup in our hand when we're doing this is because it's one of the rare opportunities we actually have to, to have a drink. Normally, we're just manically running from one problem to another, uh, trying to solve, uh, solve things. Um, so, the Morris. Uh, more progress on this. I think mostly what Scott's been working on was the sides of the um, bulkhead at the front. Uh, and he started on this um, sort of footwell slash inner wing area. So there's like a flat footwell panel he's made in there, which has got beads rolled into it to stop it sort of drumming. Um, and then there's a, a formed uh, panel in this section here, which gives us the, the wheel clearance uh, when it's on full bump and full lock. Um, so he's just started that on the other side as well. And I think moving forward from there, we're then going to be doing the seat mounts. Um, we're going to be doing an inner wing section along here. Uh, we've already done these damper mounts here, which have been cut on the top side to have the, the curve profile that we're intending to run along here on the inner wing panel. Um, and then that, and that's basically a coilover that sits, sits in here, very similar to the original uh, Mazda one. Nitron are building us the coilovers for this one. Um, the rears are exactly as per MX-5. The fronts, we've just changed the top mount to be a, a clevis type mount rather than a pin top mount that they normally have. Um, but yeah, really happy with this and kind of excited to be heading towards the stage where we're going to start doing some of the body changes on it because we're obviously widening the body for the wider track. Um, so we're going to be starting to model that and, uh, and sort of uh, make a decision on how we're going to do those changes, whether we're going to do them in the steel or we've been toying with the idea of mod modeling it, 3D scanning it and then making composite panels for it. So that's a decision we've still got to make. Um, moving along here, Stu's actually been on holiday. Um, pretty much a bar yesterday and today, um, so not a lot changed since the last time we looked at this, but he's just doing the uh, repair panel. I think we saw him making that in a previous episode, the sort of lower C-pillar repair section, so he's just offering that up at the minute and perfecting the fit before he welds that in. Uh, the rear arch tubs are completely in now, I can't remember whether they were last time or not, um, but we're basically moving towards the point of getting the rear quarters on it. Uh, and then, sneak through here, uh, we've got the JAG, Project Utah, um, Gaz has been busy on this, uh, doing what <laughs> most bodywork guys spend most of their time doing, of, uh, applying material and then sanding it back off. Um, but we're getting there now, he's been working on block sanding, you know, all, all this down the side profiles. I think he'd done the near side last time, possibly, and this week he's been working on all of the off side, getting the boot lid uh, initial prep work done on that. So we're getting pretty close now. I think another week and we'll be in the, probably getting a polyester coat all over it. So it'll be one color and that's always a, a nice motivational boost to see it in one color, even if it's just a primer coat. Uh, so yeah, I think that's that for this week. Um, I think Nat will be back next week to give you the latest update. Cheers. <laughs>